Thanks. Um, it's always fun to come to these conferences because everybody has a different way of saying my name. It's G10, but no harm, no foul. Um, so there we go. That's a laser pointer, and that's how we move. Let's talk about scaling and implementing augmented reality. Uh, it's uh, so I can get to know a, a little bit better of who we're dealing with here. How many of you have actually tried implementing or building a pilot or a proof of concept using augmented reality? By a show of hands. Awesome. And how many of you actually rely on augmented reality to do something every single day now? We're still in pilot. <laughs> My goal is that by this time next year, there's a lot more hands after that second question, the, because we really haven't seen much industry adoption as a standard operating procedure of augmented reality. So after the past couple of days, we've all come to the same realization that everyone's exploring augmented reality. Every Fortune 500 company has announced some pilot or proof of concept. Uh, every industry is actively exploring augmented reality. And it's almost hard to find somebody who isn't exploring augmented reality at this point. And the use cases are fantastic. I mean, people are getting fantastic traction within their own industries announcing how manufacturing can get leaner and more efficient or how experience-led design is now possible, how healthcare can get more personalized, or, or even how energy can get safer. And each one of these use cases are industry moonshots, and they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars if done right. So all of a sudden, that $80 billion valuation of augmented reality by 2025 doesn't seem so outlandish. The question that we're left answer, uh, that's unanswered is, why isn't it everywhere? Where is it? If every industry is exploring it, and if every Fortune 500 company is actively investigating it, if the use cases are worth millions of dollars, if the devices are getting cheaper and more powerful every year, I mean, at this point, a augmented reality device is almost more powerful than any tablet you can find on market, and the price of some of these headsets are actually cheaper than an unsubsidized cell phone. Why haven't we seen any industries replace or rely on augmented reality. I, I think of this like an iceberg. Um, at the tip, you have the headsets, the glasses, the goggles, and what you see through them. Under the surface is where you see everything it takes to bring a new technology to market. It's really difficult, I would know. Modern enterprise is a very, very complex IT environment that manages tons of applications that move tons of data, pushing and pulling back and forth across hundreds of global offices. You have software platforms like ERP, EHR, CRM, all these different types of platforms to manage that data. And augmented and virtual reality was built off to the side. Oculus was built as an entertainment platform, built on Unity, which is a game engine. Google Glass was demoed on stage to connect the audience with skydivers. None of this really takes into account Excel spreadsheets or PDFs flying around in enterprise space that are collecting sensor data from factories. So this is why a lot of proof of concepts or pilots have failed to scale, because they haven't been put into the context of the actual enterprise yet. They aren't able to integrate with the right systems. They don't work on any standard platform. And there's no sight or vision of how to build it within the enterprise IT architecture. So there's no growth path. There's no adoption. And that's why we really haven't seen it everywhere yet. That's a laser pointer. So to overcome these hurdles, there's a scaling framework that addresses the three ways that adoption happens within an industry. It's starting with business, going towards strategy, and ending up with the technology, not starting with the technology first. With the business, why is it relevant? Why is this business even talking about augmented reality? Chocolate bunnies are awesome. There might be a place for it there, but is it really the best use? We don't really know until you dive into the business problem. Are you trying to drive sales, or does augmented reality solve a better problem of manufacturing those chocolate bunnies? With strategy, there's a lot of people within organizations that are exploring augmented reality, but they're usually at the R&D or innovation lab level. How can you coalesce all that effort to minimize the cost but maximize the actual impact and have it happen in a way so each subsequent action that a company takes actually builds and one plus one actually can be three? Technology, looking at the applications, 
looking at what software products actually need to be used, what types of data are being pushed and pulled across those applications, and finally, the enterprise platform that manages all of that. If it doesn't work within that framework, it won't work in an enterprise. So to dive deep into business, the things we like to look at are the market forces. Um, an example of this would be automotive, where the time it takes to bring a new car to market is a couple of years. Why? Because the entire industry has to go through iteration cycles of sketching and drawing, modeling, and then eventually coming up with a clay prototype that they then huddle around and look at and then go back to the drawing board. Because of that process, they end up spending years on a car. The market pain point is not being able to crunch that time down anymore because of the reliance on physical prototypes. And as I'm sure you've heard by now from several colleagues and peers, there's now the availability to, re to replace those clay prototypes with digital images. And also thinking about where the right place to start is. There's no shortage of use cases even within entire industries. You can use virtual reality to do prototyping in the auto industry, or you can use it to drive sales in that uh, auto industry. When you look at the cost-benefit analysis of that, what will actually re represent higher return or higher ROI to the enterprise? Because that's where you should start. Looking at the strategy of how to actually build an implementable roadmap for the technology is also very, very important. Uh, looking through the very, very beginning part of how do you measure success. If you don't set out with KPIs to indicate when you've actually hit success, you won't know when you've hit success and you won't know when to leave pilot and start scaling. Of course, looking at functional requirements before you start any endeavor and the user design guidelines are extremely important because if the user doesn't want to use it or if the user can't use it, nobody's ever going to use the solution. And finally, even looking through how change management takes place. You can make the greatest solution on earth, but if you don't know how to train an aging workforce on it, or if you don't know how to make it appeal to an entering workforce, it, the point is moot. And finally, looking at technology, um, the programs and the software, the UX and UI of a 2D screen simply don't translate to a 3D environment. We know this, and it's been well spoken about, but it can't be emphasized enough. Really thinking through how the applications translate to a 3D environment becomes crucial when you actually get to using that, uh, that software solution day in, day out as standard operating procedure. And the information that's going in between these different types of applications at the application layer also become important, as we said, because oftentimes a CAD file won't be able to exist in a game engine because it's too dense and the polygon count is too high. So thinking about the, whether it's middleware, whether it's conversion software, or specialized actual applications, this is a huge consideration. And infrastructure. The all-important platforms that are managing these enterprises, the aforementioned tons and tons of applications pushing tons and tons of data. Thinking through what, um, how the virtual reality or augmented reality application fits within that structure, whether it's PLM or EHR, uh, becomes crucial when actually thinking through layering on the application, moving the data, and finally going towards those uh, everyday use cases. So I'm happy to give you guys a couple of minutes back in your day because I kind of want them back in my day as well. <laughs> it's late. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, but questions, if anyone has them, be great. Otherwise, you can uh, catch me outside as well. Thank you. Awesome.